I'm Ashton Addison from BlockQuest Capital for Investment Pitch Media and the Crypto Coin Show. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Dean Thomas, the Global Head of Institutional Capital at Polygon. Dean, welcome to the show and thank you for taking the time to come on. What's up, Ashton? Thank you for uh, having me on. It's an honor. You're very welcome. I'm excited to dive into the world of Polygon in the institutional capital side. I know your team is super busy creating new funds, diving into all the different spaces in cryptocurrency, and there's a lot to talk about, but I do want to dive into the institutional side for this interview. But first, I would love for you to kick it off for us with just a high level on Polygon, uh, a little bit about the platform, what your team has been working on in the last year, and then we can dive into those details. Sure. So Polygon uh, is a approximately $15 billion protocol. So what we do, the core problem that we solved initially was Ethereum's high gas fees. So if anybody's played around in Ethereum uh, and MetaMask moving money around, you'll notice that it costs you sometimes 50, 100, maybe thousands of dollars to move uh, from one transaction to another. So it's quite pricey. Um, and so Polygon initially was, was named Matic. Um, they sought out to, to provide a scaling solution to allow these transactions to occur instead of costing 50, 100, thousands of dollars for fractions of a penny. And so from there, we've blossomed into this conglomerate of different scaling solutions. Um, and so we have basically sought to either acquire or invest behind or grow with teams that want to solve um, the EVM compatible future and to make it accessible to everybody, whether it's a corporate. So we have Polygon uh, Nightfall, which we partnered with Ernst & Young on to um, something like the, the Plasma chain, which is the original chain that we, we've worked with to um, something like Polygon Hermes, which is a perfect solution for uh, microprocessing in terms of payments. And we acquired them recently in the first ever m and deal for 250 million. So it's an interesting time to be alive uh, in this space for sure. I did see that and congratulations on that. That's a huge move for cryptocurrency, one of the largest acquisitions of a crypto company into another. Um, and yeah, it's been quite a wild ride. I remember back when it was Matic Network and people were like, man, Ethereum's so expensive, we can use Matic um, as the layer two solution. And then now with Polygon expanding out, there's just so much going on with the $100 million fund and all of the other initiatives <clears throat> in DeFi. And you know, I wanted to talk about some of those challenges. I know the main one that you mentioned is solving the transaction fees, making it faster and cheaper. Um, and that was a huge pain in the DeFi space specifically because you didn't have centralized exchange covering those costs for you. It can be really expensive for uh, new users. And you know, maybe for institutional capital that has a lot of capital, it doesn't matter as much, but it's still a huge burden and, and, and Polygon solved that. Uh, but now you've ventured into other spots in, in DeFi Maybe you can talk about some of the main solutions that institutions are using uh, with Polygon uh, right now that you've built out. Yeah, it's interesting that you said that uh, if you're, you're a larger institution, it might matter less. Actually, uh, transaction costs scale just as much as the transactions that you Form, right. So uh, recently I was linking up with one of the centralized borrow lend players, um, which I'm sure your listeners will be very familiar with. I'm not going to say which one, but the CEO pulled out his app and said, listen, Dean, this is how much we've covered in terms of Ethereum gas costs this year just for our customers alone. And we were looking at a number around like $10 million or something. And it was just constantly racking up as people were drawing, depositing live. And so we linked up with their team. And we're like, what would this cost look like if we were to put it on Polygon mainnet? And so they spent two weeks or so, they came back and the number was around $300. And so as you can imagine, like a difference of, you know, for p of $10 million is quite drastic for just one simple use case, such as a borrow and uh, centralized business. Um, and so this has scaled into all other areas. You mentioned some of them like DeFi, um, but also NFTs, metaverse, gaming. So as you can imagine, if I'm in a game with you and uh, my character kills your character, in order to lodge that transaction in the blockchain or, or register the fact that now your gold is now my gold or your weapon is now my weapon, if you want to pay $50 in gas fees every time we do that, that game you know, quickly doesn't work, right? Whereas if I'm paying fractions of a penny to do that, suddenly it's much more feasible and the game designer themselves can either eat that cost or pass it on to their users through various subscription models, et cetera. And so all the things that were theoretically possible on Ethereum that Vitalik described in his white paper, they're now becoming practically possible because we're offering in a way that allows users and the developers to transact very, very cheaply and still use the same EVM compatible tools and the Ethereum based uh, Solidity programming that a lot of developers are used to and, and kind of become battle tested over the, the past few years. 
Definitely. And I really love that everyone is on board with the EVM compatibility, making sure that all of these different blockchain protocols are able to work together for a common goal and not fight against each other because the, the, the market share of cryptocurrency compared to, you know, the entire stock market equities derivatives is just so small. And I want to talk about that a little bit more because people say in 2021, like institutions are here, you know, institutional capital is investing in a lot of these major protocols, yet the market cap is still fractions of a percent of, you know, what it could be in, if you consider derivatives and stocks and all other types of investments. So maybe you could give your perspective as head of institutional capital on institutions coming into cryptocurrency in 2021. You know, is there still a lot more capital to come in? Where are we at right now and where are we headed in the coming years with institutions? Yeah, that's exactly right. So uh, right now our cryptocurrency market cap in totality is around $2.8 trillion plus or minus. Um, that number, like you said, very accurately, is probably less than 1% of global assets, whether you can consider it global equities, global credit, real estate, commodities, et cetera. And so a question I like to always ask is, what does the world look like when that less than 1% number becomes 5%, becomes 10%, becomes 20%? Because us operating the world, this, this Web3 world, we firmly believe that it's going to swallow all aspects of traditional finance, traditional media, technology, social networking, et cetera. And so when that engulfment of the traditional world happens, there's going to be a mountain of tsunami or a tsunami of capital that comes into the space. And the question is then which projects, which protocols and which forms will absorb the Pareto 80-20 of that, right? And so a large part of my job is helping be in touch with the traditional finance players with the massive balance sheets and figure out, okay, like what is holding you guys back from investing in something like Polygon through Armatic Token? Are there ways that we can create vehicles that it's easier for you to, to hold exposure? And so we recently launched the Osprey and Bitwise vehicles, which allow accredited investors to hold an equity-like instrument on their balance sheet. And then that equity-like instrument then will give direct Matic exposure instead of having to solve the issues of self-custody, figuring out kind of who your custodian would be, you know, which one wallet to use, et cetera, et cetera. Just keep your mandate as is, and you can buy these uh, vehicles. And we have around four or five more coming out um, that will then eventually be publicly traded. And so the eventual goal is, and I think all of us can, can agree to this, I, I think, uh, because a lot of crypto native people will, be, will come to me and say, hey, Dean, if we already have a MetaMask, we have Coinbase, we have like Binance, we have FTX, why would we need these equity-like instruments? And a very a simple question uh, answer to that is, um, we all, at least in the U.S., we have retirement accounts, right? Like 401ks, IRAs, et cetera. And there's money that's kind of trapped there until you re your retirement age. And money that's trapped there right now does not have access to buying Bitcoin, does not have access to buying ETH like as the coin itself, right? But the only way that they can have access is by buying vehicles like these that we are creating, such that they can you can use your kind of simple stock brokerage account, click buy, and you'll have exposure to the Matic token or the Ethereum token or, or BTC, such that um, if you pay them a small fee, you still have most of the upside, which we believe you know will far outweigh in the long term any uh, space management fees that these vehicles will, will charge. Definitely. Very cool, Dean. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about those vehicles and, and how it's going to grow. And that's very interesting that your team has just created, uh, you know, some more traditional equities. And I, I would love to dive into that a little bit more. Uh, I've, I know about, you know, there's Bitcoin ETFs, there's Ethereum ones as well in Canada, where now traditional investors can buy publicly listed stocks that have exposure to Ethereum. Is that similar to what Polygon is doing or where it's at right now, or that's where you're working towards? Yeah, so I think the uh, what, whatever shape it is, whether it's an ETF, ETP, ETN, trust, whatever you want to call the name, the fundamental uh, problem that we're looking to solve is how do you allow investors who are very familiar with traditional equity, credit, et cetera, to uh, invest behind and bring non-crypto assets into the crypto world, right? So as, you, as we quoted earlier, like the $2.8 trillion number, which is the entire market capitalization of our space, you compare that with a real traditional finance asset manager, like a BlackRock, for example, who has $9 trillion plus in assets, 
that one asset manager has multiples of what our entire space is, right, in terms of assets and management. And so the question is, how do you educate and allow the portfolio managers of those traditional asset managers to get comfortable with investing in crypto first and foremost? And then how do you give them the vehicles and tools so that they don't have to figure out how to download and install MetaMask, how to add the token, how to do it? all the stuff that we've learned to do as the gens in the space. But, you know, as traditional finance people who are used to kind of their Bloomberg terminals, et cetera, how do you bring it to them, right? Which is kind of part of our job is to basically educate and bring ease of access to the technology that we've created to these investors with massive balance sheets and, and allow them to get comfort putting their name and reputation behind our projects. Definitely. Well said, Dean. And you also mentioned part of your work is finding through Pareto's law, you know, where's 80% of the, that institutional capital going to move into? Now, is it going to be in those assets that are able to uh, get exposure from traditional investors through these equity-like vehicles like with Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Polygon? Or are there other uh, strategies in, in finding out, you know, where's that capital going to move into so I can make a move ahead of time and, and look towards the future? Yeah, that's a great question. I think if you look at the crypto markets, you'll like historically speaking, for example, there's always been the, the Coinbase premium, right? Which is the idea that like once a token is announced to be listing on a Coinbase or another big exchange, there's going to be a, a massive rise in price. And what is the fundamental driver of that? The fundamental driver of that is you previously had an asset that was largely inaccessible to the broader investor universe. And then once they get listed onto an exchange like a Coinbase, et cetera, you suddenly have so many more access points and investors and eyeballs on this asset class, which then obviously brings in a lot more attention and capital that raises the price of this asset. So similarly, um, my job at Polygon is essentially bringing the Matic token and the Polygon name and what we stand for and all the research that comes to kind of the Ethereum scaling problem that we bring with us to traditional investors and creating vehicles so that they too can have eyeballs and attention and capital flow towards the Matic token, which we think we, we want everybody to be involved in this revolution. And we think that as we continue to scale and as our network effects continue to grow, this is going to be an exponentially growing um, asset in terms of value. And so just for context, um, last year around this time, we had around, I think, 30 to 50 dApps on our network total. Today, we have over 3,000. And so like, as just like a pure growth standpoint, we are on a crazy rocket ship. And the question then becomes like, as more functionality is built out, as more people adopt our infrastructure as what they want to build on, um, what does, what is the value of that network? And if you look at all metrics of valuation, whether it's transactions, whether it's, um, you know, APYs in terms of yield on staking, et cetera, we are at the top of those metrics relative to any other major chain. And we're, in many regards, we're largely undervalued relative to the major chains that people are familiar with. And so a large part of my job is to help educate people to who we are, what we're about, what the key metrics are to measure and look at us with. And some of them, for example, daily transaction volume, right? We have far exceeded the daily transaction volume of base Ethereum any from, from six to eight times consistently. And we, this month, or maybe two months ago, uh, exceeded the daily active users of Ethereum for the first time ever. Um, and, and so it's really cool because like anybody who enters into crypto, I think you first learn about um, you know, the inflationary problem. People are printing a lot of money. You learn about Bitcoin. You learn about you know, 21 number and how there's a finite quantity, et cetera. And from Bitcoin, you learn about Ethereum. And then you start playing Ethereum. You're like, oh, wait. Stuff doesn't actually quite work. This it's very expensive, and you know it costs me more than my yield to just deposit it in this vault. Are there other solutions? And then they learn about us, right, Polygon, and then that's when things start really taking off. And um, I'm excited to just be a part of the space, and very grateful uh, to be where we are. Definitely, yeah, it's very exciting. And I think you nailed the story right on the head. That was that was it for me. It was Bitcoin, Ethereum, and then and then from there you just break through into. There's just so much to learn about, and Polygon is obviously a huge staple. Uh, to, to know about. Um, and now I want to look forward. Maybe you could give a quick snapshot and, and remind me this, um, this vehicle that you have for institutional investors, is that live right now on, on the private side? Can institutional investors invest today? And then where are you moving forward uh, down through 2022 to get more institutional investors through this same vehicle? 
Yeah, so right now we have two uh, institutional vehicles live. So you have to be an accredited investor, but you can invest as small a check as $10,000. So we have one with Osprey and we have one with, <coughs> excuse me, with Bitwise. And we're, <laughs> we're going to be launching a couple, several more that eventually will go public in the European stock markets. And so the eventual goal is like, if I have a Robinhood account that has access to the Swiss Stock Exchange, or I have a Fidelity account or a Charles Schwab account, um, or my grandma has it, you know, you can be like, hey, you, this Polygon thing is really exciting. And if you want exposure behind the narratives that we are and growing into, then uh, this is a good asset class to, to have in your retirement account. And so it could be as easy as just putting in the ticker and then clicking buy and, you know, there you go. And you have exposure to, to the Matic token. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And with moving into those traditional financial markets, especially in different jurisdictions, you know, going from the United States to, to Europe as well. Uh, does Polygon work with the regulators or are you following the regulation on how that moving these crypto assets into the traditional markets, you know, it affects uh, the regulation? Uh, regulation is something that we keep uh, an active eye on. I, I don't know that anybody really knows what, um, you know, things are going to come down looking like. We're, all we can do is just kind of keep building, keep growing, keep solving problems. And then when regulators decide, hey, this is kind of the rules of the game that we want to establish, we'll be in perfect compliance with that, right? We'll work, work with them and, and try to figure out solutions. Definitely. And for the viewers that are looking to learn more about Polygon, about the dApps that have launched, and for institutional investors that are looking to have access to uh, these vehicles and for exposure to Matic and Polygon, what's the best way for everyone to learn more? Yeah, so our website is polygon.technology. Uh, if you're an institutional investor or just trying to, to, to learn more about ways we can partner together, my email is dean at polygon.technology. Um, if you want to buy exposure to our underlying uh, token, it's Matic, M-A-T-I-C. It's available on most exchanges, centralized and decentralized. Um, and these vehicles that we're launching, um, you know, check out the Bitwise web website, the Osprey website. We have, you know, four or five other ones coming up uh, down the pipeline. And I'm just excited um, to be a, a part of this. Uh, and I'm, you know, a very small piece of it, but we're helping bring, like we said, the next $10 trillion into this assets. It's a best class. Definitely. Uh, it's, it is super exciting, Dean. And thank you so much for taking the time to come on and to talk about Polygon and these vehicles. Uh, I'm looking forward to the future and to follow up with Polygon in the near future. Uh, until then, uh, have a great day. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ashton. Really appreciate it.